Hello everyone, you're watching the Belt and Road face to face. Biggest company in Pakistan is dealing with lots of hosiery products. Only 6%. You know, compare with the uh, with the other countries uh, like American economy, in the second season it dropped by 32%. Not only that company, they are all different sectors facing problems and challenges because of the, the overcome problems. America is the number one destination of Pakistani export. Mm. So the American you know, pandemic situation will also affect Pakistan export. Hello everyone, you're watching the Belt and Road Face to Face with Maison Khan. Our program is co-produced by China Economic Net and Vash News Television. Today I'm pleased to be joined in our studio by Professor Chung Shijong, who is visiting professor at the Southwestern University of Political Science and Law. And he also served as defense attaché in South Asian countries. And we also have with us Dr. Sajid Khurshid, who is visiting faculty at Tsinghua University and department head at the Canadian International School in Beijing. Let's start the first part of our program, Hotspot. Pakistan's first textile exports have re at only 50% capacity utilization. So Interloop uh, Limited Socks Department welcomes new orders. How, uh, Dr. Sajid, coming to you first, how do you think uh, this will affect the exports? I mean, what is the situation right now? Well, if you're talking about the IP, uh, ILP, so it's, it's the biggest company in Pakistan. It's dealing with lots of hosiery products as well as the, the garments, in fact producing the world's biggest brands and seeking the raise of the, uh, the profit around 4.9 billion rupees. So its clients are all around the big brands in the world and including Nike, Reebok, Adidas, Puma in sportswear, as well as in the clothings including H&M, uh, that's uh, Uniqlo, Target and Levi's. The company has seen a strong revenue and profitability growth in the recent years. Uh, which is management claims is a treatment of like the culture because the jeans is like famous all around the world and people not only in Pakistan that's all around the world the people they love to wear the, those jeans either the boys girls all ages in fact so given that factor so but but the point is like that company not only that company they are all different sectors facing problems and challenges because of the the overcome problems but those companies I noticed that they are moving towards a different sector of preparing the, 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 uh, the, uh, the coronavirus kit that they are producing. One of my friends, he's working with a very uh, special brand. Uh, uh, it's called Khadi in Pakistan. Khadi. It's very famous. And he asked me that, can you please provide me the clothing, the raw material clothing from China to Pakistan? I said, why? He said, we are producing those, uh, the PPE. testing kits, okay. the testing kits, the c complete costumes. And we are giving to not only to our employees, and even we are we are spending all around the country. Even we have planned to export out of the country. So I mean, they are not only uh, IP, ILP, and there are many of the co the companies, those who are dealing with the garments and the, the the hosiery products, they are moving towards into these kind of things. But on the other side, nowadays the situation in Pakistan about the COVID-19 is much much better because of the government. Uh, rules, regulations, strict tight control, media, and now among the people, they got awareness. Okay. And I hope the situation would be getting better in the recent uh, coming days. Professor Chung, uh, China's economy has recovered significantly well. We don't see a huge impact. On the other hand, when we look at uh, Pakistan, the PBS, Pakistan Bureau of uh, Statistics, uh, revealed that uh, Pakistan's uh, total 60% exports are dependent on uh, textile and that they have dropped from almost 13 billion dollars uh, last year to by 6%. So can you 
understand what this drop means and how will it impact Pakistan? And uh, so far it's a 6% uh, uh, drop. Yeah, drop. I think uh, this is a good figure. Uh, this is a uh, very remarkable remarkable only 6% you know compare with the uh, with the other countries uh, like american economy mm -hmm. the second season it dropped by 32% mm -hmm. Uh, that is the lowest record mm. uh, in more than 70 years. Uh, Chinese, uh, the first season, uh, also the whole GDP dropped by 6%. And, uh, but uh, starting from uh, April, uh, the Chinese economy is uh, recovering very fast. And uh, so far as import and export uh, are concerned uh, for the whole year, uh, for the whole year, it might be uh, a little minus below mm -hmm. zero because of the international you know, pandemic uh, situation. Uh, situ situation. Uh, but uh, the Chinese import and export situation compared with the, the international situation is much better than, uh, than other countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, also for Pakistan, uh, because America is, uh, America is the number one destination of Pakistani export. Mm. So the American you know, pandemic situation will also affect Pakistan, uh, uh, Pakistan export. And this is a uh, not good situation. But uh, on the other side, China is also uh, one of the uh, most Potential important, um, most important partners uh, partners of uh, Pakistan. And uh, so far, uh, uh, now the Chinese economy is uh, recovering very fast. And then, uh, with uh, you know. Uh, uh, normal flights in, in the near future uh, and also shipping uh, I think the Pakistani business with China will, will, will also recover very soon. What do you feel about the fact that 60% of Pakistan's exports depend on textile? Textile is a luxury compared to agriculture for example. Yes. Do you think this is a smart uh, situation? This Do you is, think we should change uh, this, that? Uh, this, uh, we should continue, we should you know, further develop the textile industry. Mm. At the same time, uh, as uh, the special economic zones are being established, then we should develop uh, industrial products. And agriculture. And, uh, agriculture. and, and uh, maybe value addition in agriculture. Of course, yeah. yeah. This could yeah. be. Because the, the, in Pakistan, agriculture and textile, it's, a, it's kind of a backbone of the Pakistan's GDP and economy. So we should emphasize on those things and establish more markets and uh, find out the best partners that we can export our products for those countries. I think that's a huge potential for that. Yeah. When, if we develop you know, the industrial products, at the same time, we should also further develop textile industry because this is traditional. This is tradition. This is our forte. Yeah. You know, you know a zone like in Beijing, I bought a jean from H&M store, it's a mm. very famous store. And I didn't notice, I, I bring it home and my wife said, oh, look at it. It's very clearly written made in Pakistan while it's selling here. Mm. So, I mean, this is like, that's why these kind of companies, they have the collaboration with these big brands of international. Very important. Yeah. yeah. And because the labor is cheap there in Pakistan and the technology they are using, the best technologies they are using for stitching purposes. Mm. And they're totally in export qualities. If something which is go in very minute in kind of manufacturing, they will go into the outlets on a low price, like we have outlets here in Beijing also. We also have in Pakistan. So maybe. brands are very important. We you need know. to establish a brand. Yeah, yeah. A CPEG brand. Yeah, CPEG brand. If, yeah, CPAC brand. if, if, in CPAC if brand. Uh, a brand is very famous, then 90% you know, uh, of uh, benefits are from the brand, not from the, uh, the textile product itself. That's true. Yeah. You're watching the Belt and Road face to face. We don't have that kind of quality standards that could be used in order to export those products. No doubt for the country level is okay. For sugar consumption, all the uh, South Asian countries, the people like sugar, yes. uh, they put sugar everywhere, they consume a lot of sugar. Actually, I advise uh, uh, with the situation of you know, shortage of sugar, uh, Pakistani friends should not consume, uh, take so much sugar. You know, the, the sugar report was a big scandal in Pakistan. Hmm. How do you think these incidents impact investors' willingness to invest? You're watching the Belt and Road face to face and we're about to enter the second part of our program, Figure. According to Pakistani media, in 
January. So what are the direct effects of this sugar shortage and the fluctuation in prices? Uh, actually, um, if you look at a little bit background about the sugar crisis, Pakistan is a country who is exporting sugar to China and other countries. Last year in 2019 even, we exported almost 300,000 tons of like sugar to some extent. Why this happened, like uh, mm -hmm. the story is all, all open. There is a kind of like uh, the group of people who industrialists Monopolize. monopolies, like I mean they declared their monopoly. They, they are already getting profit, but of course the business community always want to earn more and more. And they wanted to take subsidies from the government and uh, they also want to export most of the products out of the country and getting more revenues. If they export more of, m most of the products, there definitely would be a shortage of the product into the country. And uh, the, the agriculture, for example, is sharing, contributing 30% of the national GDP and whereas 60% exports earning from the agriculture sector. The reasons behind this, that uh, this is one, one aspect. The other aspect is that we, we don't have that kind of technology of producing and uh, getting the sugar from the sugar cane. In fact, we are using the old traditional methods, for example. We don't have that kind of quality standards that could be used in order to export those products. No doubt for the country level is okay, mm -hmm. but the packaging is a very important point, in fact, in order to export those uh, points and lack of the proper distribution channel. Because this kind of things that we also need it. But according to the government uh, policies, recently they, they announced that 300,000 tons of sugar is being imported into the country. So I hope the prices will be go down in a normal prices and so on. Professor Chung, what do you think about Pakistan's sugar consumption, first of all? Uh, For a country of 210 million, 220 million. Yeah, Pakistan is used to export uh, sugar. Now, nowadays, uh, Pakistan is uh, importing sugar. I think uh, this is a problem uh, I know, created by some people. It's a system problem. Because okay. of the system, because of the policies, uh, and uh, the government you know, gives uh, sub subsidies, uh, and the farmers cannot get any benefits. Uh, all these uh, subsidies uh, have gone to uh, some families. So, so this, is, uh, this should not have happened. And uh, uh, so for sugar consumption, all the uh, South Asian countries, the people like sugar, yes. uh, they put sugar everywhere, they consume a lot of sugar. Actually, I advise uh, uh, with the situation or shortage of sugar, uh, Pakistani friends should not consume, uh, take so much sugar because sugar, too much sugar is not good for the health. And uh, we Chinese people drink milk tea without sugar. We have uh, green tea, uh, jasmine tea, totally without sugar. Even without milk. Uh, uh, yes. Milk is Chinese good for tea. the milk is good for bones, but uh, too much sugar is not good for health. Uh, same as the uh, salt. Uh, vinegar is good for health. And garlic is good for Ginger health. Ginger is good. Ginger for is health. good for health. We are eating already a lot yeah. in the food. So, actually. so Pakistani people, you know, for the time being, at least, uh, in, we should have policies to encourage people to consume less sugar. Then there will be less sugar problem. But for the long run, we have to find a way out uh, to solve the problem. Dr. Sajid, what do you think about how can we dis encourage Pakistanis? to consume less sugar. You know, like in Pakistan, um, people always like to take sweet things, especially after the meal. And um, extremely sweet extremely things. Extremely sweet things. The Mithai quantity. is one of the examples, yeah. especially on the, the, the happy occasions, on the Eid festivals. Mm -hmm. And if you offer tea, whenever you go and visit your friends at home, in winter, especially in particular, even in summer, they always uh, offer so many varieties of the, the, I mean, snacks and kind of things. but the tea is essential. And if you offer tea without sugar, they, they, they might hospital. think that they don't know how to, to like, I mean, welcome the guests. This it is, is one of the reasons. It is considered offensive? Is it? I mean, to some extent, but the trend actually, like, uh, I can give you my personal example because I've been here, been here for a long time and I used to take tea, the Chinese tea, without sugar. Uh, there's no, there's no harm. And whenever I go back to Pakistan, I always ask, don't put sugar in my tea. Sometimes they're surprised, oh, how can you take tea? The Chinese tea, generally it's like jasmine tea or different varieties of tea. 
without milk, without sugar. The Pakistani tea is, is so-called like masala tea or like milk tea, tea and and then sugar and everything, salt. Even sometimes the people they put in in the Kashmiri tea. in the Kashmiri tea exactly, yeah. and pink tea so-called. So it's a different taste. If you don't put sugar, it seems like a tasteless tea. So people they are looking for the more taste as compared to, to about the, the, the health conscious things. This is the Chinese people are more habit. health conscious. Yeah. They taking warm tea without sugar, it's absolutely good for health. But the Pakistani tea, Pakistani people, they want more taste. They don't care about the health consciousness things. Yeah. So I mean, this is the, uh, the, the, the concepts of attitudes that how we think about it, about a certain products. But the fact is that Pakistan should be able to produce more sugar. Yes. And we should be able to recover from the situation, regardless exactly. of how much we consume. What advice do you have? What can be a good roadmap? To In fact, uh, the, the first of all, the government policies. The government should have a very tight control over the sugar mills and the owners. And they should fix a quota that this amount, which is, which is the actual amount which is being consumed within the country, the extra surplus they can export on a certain quantity in a quota okay. system. Hmm. So it doesn't mean that you can, you, can, you can export half of your production and there is a shortage in the country and then you subsidize from the government. It's not the right way. So the government policies in terms of the sugar mills and these things which is really, really important. Secondly, uh, instead of in, in the, uh, the importing, this is a crisis situation, that's why we're importing, but generally we don't import sugar from other countries. This is what the reason that the government want to give incentives to the, the, the consumers. Because the consumers are already buying sugar on a very high price. And the government want to reduce that price in order to send the production, I mean, and send the sugar into the market in a huge bulk quantity. So I think um, the, the tight control, the quota systems, and also uh, they should have a check because sometimes the farmers, they have blamed that the government increases the taxes the government increases the tax, uh, the, the, the interest rate of the loans. So all these things are linked together. They disincentivize. There's this, they should provide some incentives for those farmers who are producing sugar canes. And they should have a proper mechanism of producing the sugar canes and converting from sugar cane to sugar. They should have a proper technology. If not, the government should provide easy loans to the farmers to hire or buy those technologies or rent it or even we can import it from other countries like China, for example. So this is one of the reason. Yeah. And like on the other side, people should have awareness. Instead of if you want sugar things, instead of using sugar, better to use gur. Yeah. Gur is really good for health. It's Especially pure. after you eat after meal, it's really, really good for digestive system. It could be good to export to China as well, Jackery, exactly. right? That's uh, I haven't seen gur here in China. No, but it's I very pure. Mm. It has it's a taste. A perfect thing. Mm. It's if you put it like a, a very small thing in a, in a cup of tea, green tea or whatever it is, exactly the same taste as mm, the sugar. That might be not good for health. So I, it is good for health. It's uh, really good for like health. Like honey. Yes. It's uh, like a honey. Yes. Especially if you eat after a meal, if you mm -hmm. eat too much, you eat gur, gur, I mean small amount. And within 30 minutes or an hour, mm -hmm. it's all will be digested. Good for digestion. But Professor Chung, I have another question for you. Of course, we know that uh, there are healthier forms of sugar consumption yes. and we can improve the sector in general incentives. But, you know, the, the sugar report was a big scandal in Pakistan. Mm. How do you think these incidents impact investors' willingness to invest, image, perceptions of a country? Uh, How can we improve those? This is uh, actually family rule and a family you know, controlled <laughs> emperors. Uh, in Pakistan has a long history and it's uh, very difficult to break the monopoly. So I have a suggestion how to you know, have a way out. Uh, first, the government should have uh, uh, good policies to encourage people, farmers, to plant more sugar canes. Mm. Uh, the, sugar can, uh, the farmers should have benefits. Uh, otherwise, you know, if they do not make money, uh, the plant uh, sugar canes, uh, they lose money, who will do the job? So the farmers should have uh, benefits, uh, should get money from the planting. Uh, the government should have good policies to make, sh make sure. The second is that, you know, uh, we have a market economy, Pakistan economy is also market. 
uh, in order to break uh, the monopoly, we have to invite uh, foreign capital, foreign investment, uh, foreign technology, especially foreign management. Foreign management. Mm -hmm. So, so we have competition. So then, you know, the monopoly will little by little will be broken by the uh, international uh, competition, uh, competition and, and the competition. management. Okay. Uh, so if we only arrest a few people, then this family, you know, uh, has been arrested. Uh, another family will come up. So another family will. It's, will, it's a circle. Uh, yeah, it's a circle. Kind of a circle. So we have to have market. The government should not actually should not subsidize uh, too much. If the government would like to subsidize, the should, uh, government should uh, subsidize the farmers because the farmers, uh, the interests of the farmers are the most important. If uh, that do not, you know, have uh, uh, enthusiasm to plant sugar canes, uh, that is the source. That is the source. Uh, yeah, and the one million, you have one million uh, actors uh, uh, for planting uh, sugar canes. Uh, it should not be reduced, it should be increased. You're watching the Belt and Road face to face. Cow cow is the most stressful examination. Mm -hmm. So we have to mobilize this kind of you know initials for the students to study hard themselves, not you know because of the pressure from the teachers, from the parents. They have to then you know little by little they lose uh, interest. Uh, yeah, this kind of you know they don't want to study. I, I met with different parents and the students of the senior high schools from grade 9 to 12. You are watching the Belt and Road face to face and we are about to enter the third part of our program, Culture. The scores of National College Entrance Examination 2020 have been released across China and videos of students bursting into tears after checking their scores have gone viral on the internet and were extensively reported on media networks nationwide. China's college entrance examination system is born in China's culture, adapted to change the course of history. Kao Kao is the most stressful examination mm -hmm. yes. and it, it really determines in many ways the future, mm -hmm. the destiny mm -hmm. of the children. How do you understand uh, this exam? A lot of pressure for the students, True. Uh, especially in the last year of uh, the 12 years education. Uh, a lot of pressure for the, you know, their parents and also relatives because in my family there is one there is my sister's grandson this year she passed he passed the exam so a lot of pressure uh, the, uh, about you know this cow uh, cow the formal name is national unified examination for admissions uh, to general universities uh, and the colleges uh, the full name and this uh, once a year, normally uh, the exam is uh, in June, uh, one month ahead of the, This year it is delayed for one month of uh, COVID-19. And uh, about the, the general exa examinations, uh, there are different opinions. Uh, by one point uh, I'm much concerned is that, you know, uh, what is the most important uh, for the students? If the students uh, have, you know, uh, they, they would like to study hard. Uh, so we have to mobilize this kind of you know initials for the students to study hard themselves, not you know because of the pressure from the teachers, from the parents. They have to then you know little by little they lose uh, interest. Uh, yeah, this kind of you know they don't want to study. This is uh, the failure of education. Uh, uh, also, you know, some people say students have become slaves uh, uh, of the education. Then, you know, that affects creation and also uh, the quality of the, uh, of the future generations. So, so I, this, this is a point I'm so much concerned. Yeah. And uh, even in Chinese, uh, some, some uh, senior middle schools, uh, uh, the names are, you know, uh, are numbered uh, uh, and the paper is uh, put on the wall. Then everybody has a number, year 50, year number one, year number two. This is uh, not good mm. for the... And the American education system, uh, the result of the study, how the student, you know, how is the study, uh, that is a secret protected by laws. 
And uh, even the parents, you cannot ask uh, you know, uh, the teachers for the information. The, if you ask, they will say, if I tell you it's against the law, you have to ask your, uh, your daughter, your son, your, uh, herself. So, uh, but, uh, some but uh, the other way is that, you know, uh, every year we have uh, about more than one crore uh, students in uh, the past uh, the 12 years education uh, that are going to universities. But uh, the universities uh, normally can accept uh, 7 million, 8 million, then 20% uh, you know, have to be uh, dropped. Have to retake maybe, uh, or yeah, just yeah. go to this vocational training. So, uh, you know, people say uh, this exam is not very good, but we have to, to, uh, to have the exam. This exam uh, is, is the fair do you for think, everybody. Do you think um, this exam could have a certain weightage? Like, for example, the SATs. I took the SATs in Pakistan. Mm. It's an American system, but it's mm. acknowledged by some universities. Mm. It is not 100% going to determine my admission, but mm. maybe 50%. Mm -hmm. And the others could be my extracurricular, my mm. A-level examination results, etc. Mm. Could that be a solution? Uh, no, at the moment, the, exam, the general examination, we have to do, have it, because, uh, because of the... It's uh, mandatory. Yeah, otherwise uh, there will be you know, a kind of political corruption and uh, they use the relations and then the children of some you know, important figures will go to universities. But at the moment, this examination is the... The it, best is, system. Is the fair, for, for the moment. In the future, I think the problem will be, uh, will be less. And uh, during my time, at that time, you know, uh, we did not have uh, national examinations. And uh, f uh, um, t I take myself uh, as an example. I joined the army first at the age of uh, 18 after 12 years. Then uh, the best soldiers were selected through a very fair channels. You know, mm -hmm. it was done secretly. Then, you know, uh, about uh, every 1,000, there will be one or two vacancies. <laughs> so I was selected to go to university. Mm -hmm. So as a soldier student, mm -hmm. then, you know, uh, during my time, I still think that system is better than now, uh, that, than the, the present situation. Now, the present situation is that after 12 years, they go to military universities. Then after four years study, they, they are commissioned and uh, they have no experience. But during my time, first, I was a soldier. I got experience. I was the best soldier. Then I could, go to, I could be selected for going to, uh, going to you university. You deserve the scholarship from the military. Professor well, Chen, yeah. this yeah. is the system that's also being implemented in other countries as well. Uh -huh. Not in Pakistan, Pakistan, for example. Not in Pakistan, in Korea, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. in Singapore. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these kind of like, uh, they have to go for one year training for army, mm -hmm. and then they can join the universities. I can, as soon as I can also add it to this, like I'm in this education teaching profession more than 25 years. And here in Beijing, more than 16 years. And I, I met with different parents and the students of the senior high schools from grade nine to 12. And whenever we talked about the Gokho, not only the students, even the parents, they are so much stressed just because of the, this examination, because they are worried that if my son, my daughter didn't pass this exam, they cannot qualify for the good universities. Mm -hmm. And this GOKO examination results are the only assessment being followed for the university entrance examination. Mm -hmm. Everyone, well, definitely it's, it's the dream for everyone to study in the best universities of the city, of the country, for example. Beijing is the best choice for the students. But because of the competition, there are hundreds of thousands of students every year they come up from different cities. Mm. And not only Beijing, on like different cities, they cannot cater all of them. That's why they have this kind of system. Rather it's tough and they have, but on the other side, I would, uh, uh, in my opinion, if some of the students, they have a different kind of aptitude, like the visual arts, for example, of the designing, the fashion industries, the textile design of engineering design or interior designs, but the Gokho examination is taken on the basis of the mathematics, on the English. basis of like uh, English or other Chinese language. I think definitely the education system of a country matters a lot. Uh, recently I was having a discussion with some Chinese uh, people who feel that 
uh, sure, the Gaokao is a safe system. It's a system that brings equality and equal opportunities. But at the same time, people link that maybe it doesn't really tap into the aptitude of the students. And if we see that relatively compared to the size of China's population, there are fewer Nobel laureates, there are fewer brilliant scientists now, and even in other countries in Asia. So maybe we do need to explore other avenues to understand the true potential of our youth. With that, we will close the third segment of our program. Thank you for watching. Thank you to both of you Thank for your you. insight and analyses. Until next time, goodbye.